we are here. At least I'm here and you're there, but somehow we are connected. I'm thinking before I speak. Always good idea. You've heard the saying, only speak if you can improve on the silence. I need to listen to that quite a lot. I'm turning at the moment to Matthew chapter four. So I belong to a Christian life community, which is a contemplative prayer group amongst other things that I am part of. So Matthew chapter four speaks of Jesus and the temptations. I'm gonna read a little bit or, or maybe a bit more, let's see. Then was Jesus led up to the spirit, led up off the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a hungried. That's King James for hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. We were using that as the basis of our reflections over two weeks before we meet, and we met on Thursday. Truth be told, I think some of these ideas had been coming to me over the two week period. But in this silence, we practice 15 minutes silence. What came to me was, first of all, the words, if you know who you are, you have nothing to prove. You can tell why often Americans repeat something because sometimes something is so good, it's worth repeating. If you know who you are, you don't need to prove anything. Third time, if you know who you are, you do not need to prove yourself. I've probably changed that in the three times that I've said it. And in this passage, that's what we see. The devil wants power. Jesus, he sees as the source of power and he wants an exchange. Jesus, knowing who he is, doesn't succumb. So you may know where this is going. When have we succumbed? When have we become something that we're not because of a need to prove ourselves to other people or to be accepted or whatever? For me, it was when I was, well, what came back to me was when I was about 12, 13. So I'd, I, I, I grew up in Northern Ireland, as you probably know, 
Um, it was quite a volatile situation in Northern Ireland. But despite that, I felt somewhat cocooned by the Christian environment in which I was part of, which was largely a church and church organisations. So somehow I'd retained an innocence, at least I would say I retained an innocence, other people might say something else. But then at the age of 12, 13, I began to feel, or it was even said that quite amazing that this would be said to a 12, 13 year old um, you're not much of a Christian because A, B or C I'd also felt that I wasn't tough enough that I wasn't conforming to an image that was expected of a 12, 13 year old boy in Northern Ireland and the combination of those things led me to make a choice and the choice and uh, a choice I made was to depart from the Christian environment and my very child relationship with God so when I departed what was I departing to of course as I say Northern Ireland was volatile so there was a vacuum that could be filled through politics again I had an interest but that interest became something of an identity it became a way for me to show and I remember thinking this in my head I can be as tough as anybody else uh, perhaps not as tough but certainly I could be as mean I could hate I could dislike, I could verbalise that dislike, I could cause difficulties as much as anyone else. And so I did. To a degree. That lasted around four years. And I suppose like many things that I go into, I go right into them. And so when you go into some, you, when you go right into something you see the heart of it, you see the core of it, and you see possibly through it. Thank God I did. Because it wasn't really me. Even if I'd convinced myself that it possibly was, God has a plan for us, and it's a pl the best plan. And it's a plan that brings everything good to yourself and to the world. So... I guess if we're not bringing good to the ourselves in the world, it's not God's plan for us. So at 17, again, a number of events happened and circumstances, and I came back to my relationship with God. And I guess I've been with him since then. So just before we fall into silence, those are some of the thoughts that I've had this week thinking about when we know who we are we don't have to prove ourselves
Have a great day.